Okay, so in previous videos, we've gone through the process of installing the software we need and designing our WordPress templates. Uh, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a local hosted version of WordPress. Now what that means is rather than installing WordPress on your domain name on your hosting account, we're going to install WordPress on our own computer. Uh, and what that will allow us to do is to test the theme that we've created and make sure it works. We can then add plugins to it and configure everything exactly the way we want it to be. We can even add content to that if we wanted to and set everything up prior to, go to it going live on your client's domain. Uh, the reason we do that is we want to make sure that everything works and there's no problems or errors prior to going live because there's nothing worse than setting up your site, it goes live and then there's a problem which could have been dealt with previously. It just doesn't look professional and it also doesn't look very professional to be doing those edits um, on an online live site um, when you can avoid it. So for that we create and use a local hosted version of WordPress and it's uh, very straightforward and very easy to do. So the way we do that, uh, in a previous video we downloaded XAMP, um, so we'll be using that and the other thing we want to download is WordPress. So in Google if you go to wordpress.org and it's the first result here and then if you click download WordPress and then download WordPress again that should download the zip file. I've already got it saved on my system. Um, so once you've downloaded it, as I say, it downloads as a zip file. Uh, you then need to extract the contents of the zip file. And next, what we want to do is we want to start XAMP. So if I go to the XAMP control panel option, this pops up. And what we want to do is we want to start the Apache and start the MySQL uh, option here. Now the very first time you do this and install uh, and run XAMP, sorry, you may get a, a pop-up window. That That's just your system um, asking that the program um, has is allowed to uh, access web pages. So when that pops up just click the allow access option. Um, so it might pop up when you click start on both of these. Obviously I've already only pop up the first time you do it. Um, if I click start on that, uh, obviously I've done it already so um, that option that isn't popping up for me but it might as I say the very first time you run it. And if I minimise that and then go to the browser and if I click type localhost it will automatically take me to localhost slash xamp. Okay. And again, the first time this pops up, um, you probably have the option to select which language you want to view this in. Obviously, I'm viewing this in English. So, this is what we want. So, the next thing we want to do is create a folder for our WordPress inter installation files. And the way we do that is if you go to Start and go to your computer and go to your C drive. When you first installed XAMP it should have installed the XAMP folders on your C drive, that's where you want them to be. Uh, here they are here. If I double click, double click into that you'll see a folder called htdocs. That's essentially um, like the public HTML folder that you have on your hosting where you would put all your web files. Um, so if we double click into this, this is where I create the folders for my client sites. So if I right click here, I would create a new folder and give it a name. And I've already done that for this option, which is here. Um, so I'll just go in there and I've already populated it with the, the WordPress folders. What I'll do is actually I'll just delete these and show you what we do. Okay, so we've got our folder here which is obviously now empty. Then what we do is go to where you've downloaded your um, your WordPress zip file 
I, uh, for me that's in my downloads folder and it's here if I double click it here, here's the, the WordPress files, what I do is I just select them all copy them and then go to the folder that um, I created for my client site and paste those files into the folder. Okay, so now if I go to uh, the browser and I type in local host slash the folder name uh, in this case it's the garden test site and hit enter you'll get this op this uh, message this WordPress error it says there doesn't seem to be a WP config file uh, I need this before we can get started okay so what we're going to be doing is creating a configuration file but before we do that we need to create a database and a user which again is very straightforward to do so if you go back to your local host you can either put localhost or localhost slash exampp, doesn't really matter which. So long as you come to this screen here, and to the left you have the op the tools option, and we want the PHP my admin. If you click on that, and this is where we're going to create our database and our user as well. Now what you can do is you can create um, individual databases for your project files which is what I do and then um, if you want you can create individual users but because this is a local hosted um, uh, version of WordPress what I do is I normally create what is called a super user so it's just one user that can then access all the different databases um, and it just saves having to create a user every single time that I'm setting each one up for each of my clients and the way we do that is if you just click on users and then add user okay here you can give your user a name I called mine super user uh, host you would type local host give it a password retype the password and then if we move down here uh, global privileges check all and then click add user okay and that's all you need to do uh, to create your your super user essentially so give it the name here and um, whichever name you want to see I just called mine super user for for ease um, localhost your password and check all for global privileges and then add user and you can see I've got that created here the next thing we need to do is create a database so we click here under databases okay uh, give your database a name uh, so first we'll call it garden site and click create okay that database has now been created okay so now what we can do is we can now create our WordPress configuration file so if we click create the file and it's telling us we're going to need a database name which we've got uh, a username which we've got and a password which we have uh, and the host as well and a table prefix and I'll show you what that is in a second so click let's go so the database name is the name of the database we created so it was um, garden site in this instance okay the username is super user and then the password uh, the password that you created when you created the the password for the super user uh, database host is localhost and then table prefix normally what I do is I add a prefix um, for each of my client folders so garden site for this um, and then click submit 
So I'm just going to pause this and put my password in. So once you've clicked submit, you should get this uh, message here. You've made it through this part of the installation. WordPress can now communicate with your database. And click run the install. Okay. So then you should get this window here and give the site a title. Call this garden site. Username and then a password and an email I know I've just put test at test.com uh, privacy allow um, search engine to index the site so again I'm just going to quickly put the password in uh, and once you've done that just click install WordPress so I'll just quickly put the password in And then click install WordPress. Okay, and then you should get this message saying success, WordPress has been installed. And then you can just click login, put in your username um, and our uh, password and then log in and there we go you can see now that um, we're into the WordPress dashboard and up here you can see it's the local host for our garden site if I just click on that you can see it's loaded up the default WordPress theme. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to um, add the theme that we created. So if I just go back here. Now you can obviously do it in two ways. The first is go to Appearance, Themes uh, and install themes in the normal way and upload the theme. Now what you might find depending on your system you might, if you try to do it that way, you might get a, a error message that relates to the size of memory that you have for uploading and um, this is a thing that can happen on your um, local hosted version of WordPress depending on the system that you're running whether it's 32 or 64 um, I've had that happen so the simple way to get around that is just simply to put the theme folder into the uh, WordPress uh, folder on your local machine and I'll show you how to do that just now. So if you go back to the garden test site and if you see the WP, WP content and then click on themes that's the two themes that we've got. So what we want is we want our um, the new theme that we created so uh, if I click on to my documents, that's my templates and do, 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 where did we put it now? There we go, I think it was this one here and because um, we're not uploading it and um, we're actually just copy it over I'll just quickly extract it okay and we want the folder so is it there it's there and then I'll just drag that over to the themes folder and it's there and then if I go back to the themes there's the gardening site there and if I could just click activate you can see here that it's activated our custom theme and if I click here you can see that that theme is now live Okay, 
and then what we can do is we can then customize the the content on the theme uh, and customize the way that the content looks so that's it for this video as i say it was um to show you how to set up a local host version of wordpress and install your new wordpress theme in the next video i'll go over um the plugins that i normally add in order to um customize the layout of uh, some of the pages uh, for my client sites mainly for the home page um because in many cases obviously um WordPress was originally conceived as a, a blogging uh, platform but it's now obviously been widely used as a content management system. Um, the only drawback is straight out of the box um, the layout of the content tends to still be in very much a you know a, a tech, continuous flow of text uh, obviously you're down to images to that but um, in many cases in client sites um, it's nice to see that text split up into different layouts. So, for example, if I go to the actual artist here uh, website, just to show you what I'm talking about, uh, we have a quick look at the samples, and uh, this one I'll do just to show you. If I click on preview template see here how the content on this page is split into three columns actually technically it's, it's sort of kind of four here um, but yeah split into these columns um, straight out of the box WordPress doesn't look like that it would just be I see a continuous flow of text um, so if you want to create this sort of column format then there's a couple of plugins that we need to add to create that functionality and um, that's what I'll show you in the next video uh, is the plugins that I use to create those sort of custom layouts mainly for, as I say, the home page. Okay, so I will see you in the next video.